Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aiga and welcome to my channel Heart Notes where I talk about all things perfume. Today I will be talking about all the perfumes that I've acquired in sort of the last six months. Uh, it sounds quite like a long time but there's not that many perfumes actually because I just didn't buy that many. Uh, so yeah, let's just dig in. So the first one I'm going to be starting with is the Good Fortune and this is the Elixir Intense version uh, from Victor and Rolf. This is a very vanilla, sweet, warm, white floral, a bit woodsy, a bit smoky. It's a nice, sexy, feminine, sort of almost everyday scent, I want to say. It, it is quite strong, so if you're sensitive to perfumes, this might be a bit too much for everyday. But I know that I would definitely wear it as an everyday perfume. Uh, this lasts quite uh, good as well, which I would expect from an intense version. So yeah, this is definitely a win. I like the scent, I like the perfume bottle design as well, and it was definitely a good Christmas present. Then I have a couple of Britney's perfumes. So the first one is Rave by Britney Spears. This is her part of her prerogative series. Now this is just very generic, sweet, a bit weak, sort of the typical celebrity scent, I wanna say. I expected a bit more of this, especially it being called Rave. So this was a bit underwhelming, I want to say. Yeah, it's good. It's sweet, fruity, floral. It's nice, but it's nothing special. If you don't have this in your collection, you're not missing out on anything. The next one that I have here is the Carolina Herrera's Good Girl Blush Elixir. Now this came out very recently. I got it right away. Um, I had the original blush version as well, but now that I have this one, I got rid of the original because this is just a sweeter, more intense version of the original blush, which I like more. So this opens up as a woodsy, sweet patchouli, powdery, feminine, but as it dries down, uh, it gets closer and closer to that original blush. But I do believe that this is stronger, so I prefer this one and it projects better as well. So that's blush elixir. Next up, I got Alien by Mugler, and this is the Mirage Alien, and it is discontinued, so sorry about that, but but apart from just getting new perfumes, reviewing them, I also sort of still just collect perfumes, and I do want to get all the aliens, well, probably not all of them, but as many as I can, and this is one of the discontinued ones that I got, and it smells so gorgeous, it's so clean, watery, it's just incredible how they got this scent. It just smells like crisp, watery air. I can't even describe it. It's really a beautiful scent. Uh, it is an eau de toilette, so it disappears a bit sooner than the rest of the aliens, but the scent is so unique that I love it still. So this perfume has mineral notes. It has lotus and hinoki wood, which I'm guessing is the elements that are making this perfume so just fresh. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. And if you are collecting your aliens, then I think this is definitely a must. And you can actually still find it. It's not super expensive, so it is still doable. Then uh, my mother-in-law for Christmas got me a Prada, and this is the Prada in La Femme Intense version. And it smells nothing like the original Prada La Femme, which I also have and which I adore. Uh, this is just very, very woodsy, kind of. It just smells like a wood like a bit older dried wood. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it. It does, Because of the fact that it smells like wood, it kind of reminds me of like a niche perfume because my experience with niche perfumes is that sometimes they just smell like so woodsy and spicy and smoky that it's not really something that you wanna smell like, at least for me. And this kind of reminds me of that. So yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this. <clears throat> So another one that I got, um, I got a lot of Elizabeth Taylor perfumes actually to uh, do her perfume range, which I did, which I'll link somewhere. But I did declutter a lot of those perfumes, but this one um, stood the test and it has stayed in my collection. I've also put in a dent in it. Uh, I think it's my favorite from her range actually. So this is very sugary, sweet raspberry perfume. It's sweet, but it's not like too sweet. I think this is good for springtime. This isn't as heavy and sweet that it would only suit winter. I believe there's some a rose somewhere in here as well, which gives that Elizabeth Taylor sort of DNA, but it's a lovely perfume. I've enjoyed wearing it. Oh, and it's Elizabeth Taylor, White Diamonds and Rouge. 
Then I have another Britney and this is Circus. Uh, a lot of people like this. I actually like it as well and this kind of reminds me with that citrusy sweetness, it kind of reminds me of uh, Amor Amor by Cacherelle. Yeah, it's a fresh citrusy perfume. It's, it's nothing really that special, but I do think that it's nice and it might stay in my collection as well. The longevity isn't too bad too, as opposed to the later Britney's perfumes. So yes, so that's Circus. So then when we went to our wedding trip in early September on the plane, we bought this perfume. They didn't have a tester for this. So this was a blind buy on a plane, <laughs> but it turned out really nice actually. So this is Ambassadora and the brand is Quisada or Gisada. I'm not sure, but this is the brand. So it's from Switzerland and it's quite new. I think they started the company in 2016. So it's a fairly new perfume brand. And this smells beautiful. So this is, um, it's classed as a perfume for women, but I think on their homepage, it said that it's unisex. So I'm not really sure about that, but actually it did suit both me and my husband. My husband wore this perfume actually to the wedding because he forgot to take a perfume with him. Can you imagine? So he was wearing this, I was wearing this. We were both quite happy, uh, have a bit of dent in there as well. Uh, I like the bottle. I like that the cap is, magnetic that's super nice oh and well the scent itself so it's a sweet white floral perfume with like a woodsy citrusy opening um, it's quite nice and for me it kind of pulled the feminine side of the perfume and when my husband wore it it kind of pulled out the masculine notes i don't know how that works but yeah it's brilliant one of the best blind buys i would say then another elizabeth taylor and this is white diamonds night so this does smell a tiny bit vintage i believe especially now after all the sweet, sweet floral fruity perfumes that I've been spraying around in this room. This really does smell quite serious and vintage, but essentially this is a woody patchouli amber uh, perfume, which kind of gives a bit, a bit of softness from the florals in the middle notes. There's some fruits as well in the opening, but in general, this is quite of like evening going out type of scent, hence the name night. All right, then we have another Britney. This is electric fantasy. It smells really nice. A lot of people say that this smells like uh, Donna Born in Roma by Valentino. I don't have that perfume. I have tried it, but I don't remember what it smells like. But this smells really nice. It smells like it could be a dupe for designer scent. It's quite bright, fruity, with a nice sweetness to it as well. But I have tried this in the last couple of days and it just does not last, which is extremely annoying because it is a pretty scent. It's a pretty feminine spring summer type of scent but it just doesn't last. So I'm not happy about this. So then I have a perfume that is a blast from the past. Uh, I used to wear this in high school, not a lot, but every now and again, when I wanted to feel like I'm an adult or something. <laughs> so my mom had this and this is Amarige uh, Marriage by Givenchy, or as I used to say back in the day, Givenchy. And this is, it is a sophisticated scent. I want to say this is an adult scent. So me wearing this when I was 18 is kind of ridiculous to me now. I know a lot of people are mature when they're 18 nowadays, but I was a child, believe me. So this is a warm, spicy, amber kind of floral perfume. There's patchouli in here as well. There's a bit of citrus in the opening. It's, it's very well blended actually, because all the notes sort of, they complement each other very well and none of them really just stand out and pop out. So yeah, I think this is a beautiful scent that they have done. Um, this is of course discontinued. I believe this came out in 2006. And yeah, this is sort of in my legacy perfumes collection where I just have perfumes that I've used in the past. So I probably won't be using this that much in my day-to-day -day life, but I'm really happy to have this. And then I got three Jennifer Lopez perfumes as well. I will be doing her perfume range soon. So this is Live Lux. I have the original Live as well, which is quite boring. This one is super, super refreshing. It, the live version is refreshing as well, but this one is even more refreshing. If that smells very generic shower gel, so this smells like a more expensive shower gel maybe, or sort of shower gel shampoo combination, which is really refreshing, juicy summer. You just immediately think of summer with this scent. So even though I would class this as generic as well, I think I, enjoy this one more than live. So live Lux, live Lux. Yeah, I think that's uh, a better version. And then there is Enduring Glow. 
Uh, it smells nothing like the original glow. It's not soapy. It's not soapy at all. It's like a sweet, like a sweet floral everyday scent. Yeah, it's quite juicy but soft at the same time. It's like a perfect combination of sweet and fruity or sweet and juicy. It's not too much on either side. So this is a great everyday scent, I want to say. And I think this definitely deserves more attention than glow, which pretty much just smells like a bar of soap. But okay, I understand it's the first perfume, so it gets more, more attention and it's more iconic, so to say. And then the last one today and the last one from Jennifer Lopez, it's Promise. She has two sort of perfumes in this collection. There's Promise and then there's one which is in the same type of bottle, just uh, a pink. The one perfume smells bad. I don't like it, but this one smells like a Juicy Couture and I love it. So yeah, pretty much it's sweet, fruity, floral, a bit more woodsy in the opening than the original Juicy Couture. But in general, after the first couple of minutes, it just smells like Viva Le Juicy. I love that type of uh, scent profile. It's one of my favorites, so I'm really enjoying this perfume. I just got it recently and it doesn't seem like it, but I have put a dent in it. So yeah, I'm enjoying this perfume definitely. And yeah, that is it uh, for the perfume haul. Let me know if you've tried any of these perfumes and thank you for watching. Bye!